All right, here we go again. Uh, we're gonna do the front tire this time. So far, I'm gonna go get a jack, and we're gonna jack the front wheel up because it sits on the center stand and leans on the front. So I try to find a good spot under there to jack on and we'll go from there. Got a piece of wood here. Um, gonna try to put that underneath so I don't damage anything. See if I can show you what's under here. All right, so there we go. There's a little bit of the actual engine case. I'm gonna try and jack on the engine case here. I'm gonna put this piece of wood under here or find one that'll fit in there good so I'm not damaging any plastic parts. So that's what I'll do now. All right, seems pretty solid. Just kind of clean this up a little bit. There's caliper bolts, speedometer cable, axle, axle clamp bolt is up here, clamping this. All right, so a couple of things here. <laughs> You have to take the front fender off if you don't get the front tire high enough up in the air by four. And then just jacked it up a little bit more until the back tire was lightly touching. And now I've got some pretty good space under there. And here's something for scale. Right there. That's right under it. So you can see it's, it's far enough up. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to get that tire out of there. Um, now, I do have an ATV lift, which would make this whole process way easier. You know, and if if you have an ATV lift, then by all means use that, then you can just jack it up in the air and pull the tire out. And I would do that too, but I'm assuming most people who are watching a video like this probably don't have one. And so I'm just going to try and do it without, just, just to do it. So, anyways, we'll pick back up from here tomorrow, I think. I'm not sure I've got much left in me today. One more thing on this subject here would be, if you're going to do both your tires at the same time, and, you know, if I had an open space in my garage, I would do that, but I'm working on my driveway, and I don't like to leave it out in pieces. Um, and a lot of times I don't have enough time all at once to do it, so um, I'm doing them one at a time. <clears throat> but if you were going to do it, when you have the back tire off for doing the back tire, then you can obviously jack that up higher, and you can get your wheel out without this 2x4 here, because the wheel wouldn't be there to hold up the show. A little thought here. Um, well, I guess here I've got... I put that in there last night, uh, just in case the jack slowly lost uh, height. I didn't want the front wheel to come down with the center stand on that 2x4. Right now it's leaned back farther than it normally would be, which will hold that center stand where it's at even more than normal. But if the front wheel comes down to the ground with that up on that 2x4, it's actually tilted forward more than normal. And you know, there's a risk that it might fold the uh, center stand back up and then the bike would fall over. I didn't want that to happen. And so I put that little wooden box under the front wheel just in case. Um, also, when I lower this down, I'm going to have to raise the jack back up to get the 2x4 out before I let it down. Um, also, an, another alternative would be to take like a, a come-along strap or, you know, some other means of, of holding the center stand out so that it can't fold back accidentally. Um, just a couple of things to keep in mind. So this is the left side of the bike, and anytime I say left or right, it'll be from the perspective of a seated rider. So we're on the driver's side, I guess you would say, of the bike. Um, you want to take <clears throat> this caliper off as far as the manual is concerned. These are uh, 12 millimeter bolts here. Uh, before I take the other one out, I'm going to go grab a bungee cord. Alright, so, you would want to support it. You don't want the weight hanging off of uh, the uh, hose that attaches it. So, there we go. Let me take the pseudometer cable out. And... I've never done that before, so we'll see. You just turn this. Okay, that turned pretty easy. All 
All right, so that popped right out. All right, that just popped right out. Still on the left side of the bike here. Um, this uh, is the nut for the axle. And it looks the same on both sides, but one side's the, the axle itself, and then this side is the nut. This is the left side of the bike. This here is the clamp bolt that clamps on the nut. <clears throat> now, hopefully, if this is tight and this has enough friction and, and holding power, then you don't have to use a wrench on this side. You, we're going to take the right side off, and it should unscrew out of the nut, and then we can pull the axle out from the right side. So let's go do that. We're on the right side of the bike now. This is an eight millimeter, the clamping bolt, right there. Okay, loosen that. I plan on just being cheap here. Um, instead of going and buying the proper tool, I'm just using a, a what do you call these things, a coupling nut. Um, it was like a buck. So I just bought that, the, the size slightly larger than what would fit, and then I just uh, filed it down until it fit the axle and a 12 millimeter socket. And uh, I'll use that. Hopefully it doesn't twist off. I really don't think it will. If it does, I guess I'll be forced to go buy the right tool. Alright, I don't know if this is going to be enough leverage. Uh, this would be another good time to have this uh, box underneath the front wheel so that we're not pushing down on nothing here. <clears throat> Alright, I'm going to go get an adapter so I can use a bigger wrench on this. Alright, I went and grabbed a half inch to three eighths adapter. Let's see if we can get this thing off of here. Alright, not too bad with the breaker bar here. I'm going to get the uh, box back out of there now that I've got it broken loose. Alright, back tires back on the ground. here um, it fell out of my foot while I was rolling the wheel over it's on the right side of the bike side of a tree or something along those lines too, but I've got an old piece of jump car that I can beat on without worrying about it. it makes it pretty easy, so I'm going to do it this way. comment on the last video I did from Xavier1965 saying, hey, if you spray some of that, he said dish soap, but I just, I already have Windex in a bottle. 
But he said if you spray that on, it'll make it easier to come off, which I'm sure it does. I should have done that the first time, so let's do it this time. So like I said before, <clears throat> you want the you want the bead sunken in to the narrowest center part of the rim to give the other side a chance to come out. I don't really know if I learned so much last time that it's going to be easy this time, but we'll see, I guess, how it goes. I did forget to grab the screwdriver that I used last time, which I left the tape on as just kind of a, a third way to hold the tire, but if I need it, I can go grab it. I did make a couple of spares of these uh, plastic shields. These are just 20 ounce pop bottle. I just cut a section out of them and you just kind of shove it in there. Makes a good easy rim protector. It does feel like it would deliver a nasty cut if you uh, tried pulling it out of the tire and slipped. So try not to do that. This seems to be coming along pretty good here. Maybe one more? Here we are. Alright. Side one. Okay. So this piece comes off. Didn't know that. Now we both know. I'm going to go set that somewhere safe. I think I'm going to spray some more stuff in there. Can't hurt. Just try to get it on the inside of the rim here. see what we can do. Okay, I got a rim protector in there, so don't want to destroy it. Alright, man. That wouldn't be too bad. I don't know if uh, the front tire is easier to get off than the back, or if I just got a little learning in last time. You can see it has kind of a, a point in the middle. It looks like I spend most of my time turning, which isn't the case because I live in the Midwest where we have very boring flat roads, or straight roads, I should say. I'm going to try and wipe it up a little bit. I've already got this Windex out here, so I'll just wipe it off quick. Kind of interesting. It depends on which way your tire is going. So, front fitment for me. So we'll be putting it on to rotate that direction. Get some juice on here.
upper sides on. Good news. Looks like that's as far as I'm getting with my hands here. Make sure that's in center. There we go. That makes a huge difference. Also, knowing where your tire irons are makes a big difference. Here we are. We'll see if we can just walk it around from one direction. I might have to go get that screwdriver, but hopefully not. It is extremely hot out here today. Make sure that's in the middle. Okay, we're doing good still. not too bad this time. I think the front tire is a little simpler. I'm going to try and get this wheel weight off of here quick. See if I can snap my blade off of my Leatherman here. Alright. It's coming. Alright. Got that off of there. I might try and balance this before I set the bead um, and just see how it goes, I guess. We'll see. Here's a little jig I made. Pretty simple. Um, originally I had thought that these bearings would be nice uh, to make the wheel turn easier, but the wheel almost always turns on its own bearings here. So I just I slapped a little chunk of cardboard on here to space up the other side just to get the wheel more vertical. So. See if I can swivel the tire around and see if that affects the weight. So right now, let's see here. Right now the heaviest side is down about there. So, I don't know, what's the easy way to remember that? Looks like that arrow might be unique. So, there's that arrow anyhow is about right here. So I'm going to try and swivel the tire around now. <laughs> Let's see if that changes. Oh, I'm going to pull the sticker off. That probably affects the weight a little bit. Here's what tire I got if anybody's curious. Alright, so I swiveled the tire around. Let's see if that changes the weight. Okay, it does seem to change it. Not very dang much stuff. I was telling another sticker on here. Yeah, there's a small one. Let's get that off of there too if we're going to do it. When I spun it around quite a bit, it moved the arrow from about here to about here. Now we're about in the middle. Just for fun, I'm going to try moving at 90 degrees. The tire is not really making much of a difference here. Just like the back tire, it's going to go in nearly the same location, which is right here. Wheel weight is not easy to get on there. Yeah, nope. 
it and see what it does now. We'll put that arrow that we were using at 90 degrees. That looks like we need more weight yet. So, I'm going to go get the stick on wheel weights that I purchased. Looks like we're going to need to use them. I'm just going to wipe this off with a little denatured alcohol. If I can, I'm going to stick some on both sides just to balance it out a little bit. Get a lot of stuff off of there. Last I knew, alcohol doesn't remove aluminum. But I'm certainly getting a lot of something off of here. Maybe this is just this just points out how badly I need to clean the bike. <laughs> okay, you don't need to watch me do this, but I'm going to wipe the whole rim off. Alright, you're just going to have to deal with the fact that I've got dirty fingernails. I always see people complain about that on YouTube videos. Alright, so you see how this works, in case you're curious. See inside of the Schrader valve, here's the tool. There's just a couple of flat spots that it grabs onto like so. So let's put that in. It just slips in and then threads in. You don't get it super tight. Just finger tight. Good enough. Easier for it to seat. a little bit of spray on it. Do both sides here. Yeah, it's holding there. We got a pressure gauge so we can see where we're at here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's only like 20 DSI or 17 or somewhere around there. Probably just about ready to start popping these beads out. We're at 30 PSI. There we go, there's the first one. We're at 35 PSI. All right, second bead hasn't seated yet. That's 40 PSI. There we go. I jump every time. All right, I'm good at 40. Let's try that. That uh, my friendly local motorcycle dealership just let me have. I asked them if I could buy some, and they said, "Here, you can just have some." So it looks like these ones are quarter ounce, or seven seven grams. And these ones, I'm assuming, are five grams. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hope that 10 grams does a job. And so we'll just. Cut a couple of these off, and then I'm going to use just regular masking tape at first so that I can find the right location. And then we're going to do some extra cleaning on the rim right where we're going to put it to make sure that that adhesive sticks. So let's do that. Let's stick these weights on top. All right, so there's 10 grams. Let's turn that 90 degrees. Okay, 10 grams ain't enough. That wants to go right back where it was. I'm going to try cutting off two of the other ones. We'll see if that's the right weight. Alright, 
Let's turn that 90 degrees. Where does it go? Yeah, that's not enough either. Let's try putting both of them on there. And we'll see what that does. So this is 27 gram and 25 gram. Put that at 90 degrees. Still not enough. So, I'm going to try a second pair of the 7 gram ones. Alright, so here we go with two pairs of the 7 gram ones. Try it at 90 degrees. Still not enough. It's not moving very fast anymore. <clears throat> Add the other set of five gram ones and try that again. Now this is four seven gram weights and two five gram weights. Uh, I lost my top spot here. There it is. Try these. Alright, let's put that at 90 degrees. It still, still wants to go up. Let's, uh, let's try it. It looks really close. <clears throat> let's try getting rid of the set of fives, and we'll do two more of the seven gram weights. <clears throat> By the way, I'm just, I'm cutting these weights with a pocket knife. That's pretty soft. Find the high spot again. Okay, this is the lightest spot. Put it there. And let's see what that gives us. 90 degrees. Alright, we're holding position now. I'm just going to try a few different spots here. That's a, that was actually kind of going down a little bit, but let's see here. I just pushed it and gave it a little bit of a nudge that direction. Kind of goes and it slowly stops. It's almost falling. It's almost like that's a little bit too much, surprisingly. Pretty sure that was a light spot. I might try trimming just the tiniest bit off of one set of the seven grams. I'm gonna go get a side cutter. It'll be a lot easier to trim with that. I trimmed a little bit off. I tried to like eyeball one sixth. That would divide the difference between the two fives and two sevens, you know? Give or take. Anyway, let's see what that does. Okay, now it's sitting there nice and solid. All right. Alright, so I'm just going to clean those spots extra good. Seeing as how it's warm out, that adhesive is going to, it should stick really well. You know, if it were cold out, you might want to heat up your rim. Because, I don't know, you know how uh, adhesive works in the cold. Anyways, I'm going to clean that up and I'll come back when I stick it on. So, this part here is facing outward. And this part is, you know, the inside of the rim. You definitely don't want to stick any weights out here because inertia is going to try to fling the weight off uh, or centrifugal force. You know, and if you're sticking them in here, centrifugal force is causing it to be pressed harder into the surface that it's stuck to, which would be a better thing. Now, I would rather have these closer to center line, like the original one, but these are stick-on ones, and you can see that you've got the rough casting in here. I just don't think it would stick as good to that, so I'll be sticking it out here on the smoother stuff. All right, here we are. I got three on either side. Two full ones and that one that I trimmed. There's, I just pressed them on there as hard as I could. And uh, I'm just gonna kind of keep an eye on them over the next few rides and make sure that they're not going anywhere and look at them periodically to make sure they stay there. Uh, the spacer on this side. Hopefully that'll just kind of stay there for me. Put the, sp 
speedometer, gearbox, or whatever you would call it in there. I kind of want to eyeball it, make sure that it's meshing. It's hard to tell, really. You know? Where the speedometer hooks up, right here you've got two notches. Wipe that chunk out of there. You got two notches here. Now they line up with the inside of this little spacer gearbox thing. All right, there you can see. You can see there on both sides. There's a little bump that sticks out. Now that doesn't stick out very far. So trying to feel the difference between the notches being in incorrectly and not incorrectly is very small. So imagine if you put that on and that wasn't lined up and then you crank down on the axle shaft, you know, I'm thinking you could ruin some stuff pretty quick. So here's, here's the way I've figured out how to do it. Is down inside, down inside there is where the cable attaches. I wish I had manual focus. All right, you can see it. It's kind of like a little flat blade screwdriver at the base there that the cable attaches to for the speedometer. So what I'm going to do is, when I was trying to swivel it around, I wanted to swivel it while I was pushing it on and feel it drop in, but the gearbox turns with very little pressure, so you can't, it, it just turns. If you don't have it lined up, it doesn't line up, and if it is lined up, you can't tell that it is. So what I'm doing is I'm sticking a, a small flat blade screwdriver in there just to gently hold the internals from turning and then I kind of hold that with my finger here I look and verify that I'm about in the right location and then I'm gonna watch and feel it drop in and there I can feel it and you can see this here there it's not super obvious looking but you can definitely feel it Without that screwdriver stuck in there, you can't feel that. All right, let's see if I can make this look difficult. I'm going to try and avoid damaging the brake pads here, if I can. Okay, we're between them. All right, it is looking difficult. Success. Okay, spacer back in. I double checked that the speedometer gearbox or whatever you call it is in place properly. Now my brake pads are stuck together here. Hold on. Now I'm sure there's easier ways to do this.
Okay, I was actually wrestling with this for a minute. You can actually see down inside of there. You can see the end of the bolt. Once I noticed that, and, and there's even a little circle in the center of the end of the axle, so you can kind of see that if it's centered or not, and that helps you push the wheel around and get it to fall into place. There it goes. All right, so I'm just gonna get this kind of slightly tightened. Let's see if I can get this back on here without damaging the pads at all. This would be a perfect time to put pads on, but I don't really seem to need them. They look pretty good still, so I will not be changing my pads. I suppose I better get this out of the way. Alright, trapped into place there. Get them started by hand. These are 12 millimeter once again. You can see up in here, if you're looking on the back side of the left side where this speedometer gearbox goes, it has to get, there's a bump there, and it has to be trapped in this space here. I almost didn't notice that. But I was wondering what, what was supposed to hold it in place, and I found that in the manual, so make sure that you have that in the right spot. All right, let's see if I can't get this uh, speedometer cable back in there in one piece. All right. This wasn't super tight to begin with, so I'll just make it, once again, not super tight. Alright, these brake bolts are 24 foot pounds according to the uh, manual. I got this set at 24. Alright, this one here is 65 foot pounds. I'm going to set the wheel back down onto that box. I intended to do that and I forgot. There we are at 65. What I have read on forums, the Concours Owners Group forum, it's a very good forum. These nuts here, the locking for the front axle is <clears throat> you, you loosen them both up a little bit and then we're going to compress the suspension bounce it around a little bit I might drive it a, a little tiny bit that helps everything work itself into a centered nice aligned position so you don't have a uneven torque <clears throat> and then I'm going to tighten them down after that If I drop it, the video will be extra exciting. Here's how I did it before, I'm going to try it again. I would highly recommend you have a friend help you with this part. Yeah, don't do what I'm doing. Back on the ground, see. I bounced it around a bunch with both of these uh, clamp bolts loosened up. And I didn't put it on the side stand. Instead, I put it on the center stand so I wouldn't have it go sideways in any way, I guess. 
I don't know if that matters, but that's what I did. So, I get these tightened back down, take it for a test drive. Well, I've got uh, about 50 miles on it. The uh, the tire isn't even broken in yet, obviously, but it still feels a, it feels a little bit like it follows small road lines, like the kind where they put dozens and dozens in um, in order for traction in the winter. I think is the purpose, but it, it seems to slightly follow those, but not not enough to really be annoying. Um, all the uh, all the weight stayed on. Everything stayed tight. The bike's riding good. I just figured uh, I needed to have a little bit of a follow-up of some sort um, since that was a pretty long video. Um, but anyways, yeah, I mean, everything worked good. Uh, it turns in way better. Um, with those old tires, um, it just, I don't know, I don't know if, if it's just the type or just the way they wore, but you had to counter steer a lot harder than you should have to even stay in like a medium uh, medium curved, medium speed turn, you had to apply a lot of counter steer. And now you just pretty much think about turning and it turns in. It it does, it rides really nice with these new tires on it. Um, they're both the same brand and type. They're both Avon AM26 Road Riders. So, I don't know. I guess that's a tiny little review of the tires. So, hopefully the videos were helpful. Thanks for watching.